good morning good evening good afternoon wherever you are watching this video so i finally figured out how to do the amazon storefront so all my recommendations are now in a little storefront now so i'll have them in the link in the description thing down below in the bottom so this way you can just click on it and then click on the stuff right now i would highly hop on the bandwagon um for this brush right here this chris christensen brush that i'm always raving about it's usually 75 dollars they've actually upped it to 84 dollars on amazon but right now it's on sale for 58 dollars um so hop on this go click on my uh, storefront click on the brushes and combs and then uh look for this brush uh, i highly recommend it there's some combs in there too um, if you haven't subscribed and you're new to me, hello, how are you? I uh, hope you're doing well this fine Monday. Uh, I'm still doing that GoFundMe for Miss Debbie. Uh, we did get a recent update. Um, they're talking about sending her to a rehab facility to try and help, uh, I guess, with physical therapy and stuff. I have one of her dogs that she normally grooms, Miss Sadie Green. Um, she likes to do these high skirts. I'm, I'm not really a fan of the high skirts, but I know that's how some of them used to get done back in the day where it's a little bit higher. Um, I am going to take it lower. Um, I'm sure there's a reason why Debbie has it that way. Because um, you can tell I've done, it, I've done it before and you can tell that this part here is starting to grow back. But we are going to do a either a seven or a nine on her back i'm not quite sure just yet <coughs> and then i'm not sure if i want to scissor i'll probably end up doing a comb on her legs so let's get into this now this brush right here she does have some knots, but not a lot. But this brush right here will get it out. I also have a metal comb on my uh, Amazon storefront. Um, these two match made in heaven. Comb goes through it to make sure, oh no, oh no, I got a tangle there. Oh no, what should I do? Get this brush. I'm gonna brush this. Now when you first get this brush and you start brushing, it's going to feel really, really weird. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on this brush at all. Um, but if you're, when you first use this brush, you're going to feel like you're pulling the dog's hair. And I'm telling you, you're not. If you were hurting the dog, trust me, the dog would turn around and get do something. I'm almost get my metal comb. Oh my God, look at that. I can go all the way through it. This brush is amazing. Go buy it. Just telling you, $58 right now, this is steel. I'm actually going to buy uh, Friday. I'm going to buy a backup one. Not that I need a backup one, because I've had this one for two years, a little over two years. Um, and the pins are, they're still fabulous. And I throw this thing down like this all the time. It's been kicked off the table. It's been sat on. I'm telling you, this is the last brush you're ever going to buy. It's really great for, you know, double-coated dogs if you're trying to de-shed them. This will help pull out a lot of that coat. Um, I mean, now there are other brushes you should use for de-shedding, but I use this on all my dogs that shed. <coughs> um, And I'm barely putting any pressure on. That's the one thing that I like about this brush. With the person that has arthritis and carpal tunnel in their hands. Um, I don't really like having to put a lot of pressure. Because one, one, it's going to hurt the pet. But two, it's going to hurt my hands. And I'm not trying to have column A or column B. Now, I don't know if uh, this YouTube video is going to pick up the background music. I'm trying to lower it. Just 
what I do here. That sensitive tissue is going to want somebody burn. dog is to do it in sections. As you can see, I'm not really doing any sections, but I am doing it in parts, so I guess technically I am. Sections would be you take this area and then you lift it up into the next area and all that. All that. I'm going to brush my dog as if I'm brushing my dog at home. Now your main areas that are going to mat up uh, arm, underneath your arms, your legs, armpits, back legs. And if you have a skirt, I like this over the day. You see on the here. We're going to shave all this in the center to give her a, uh, a maternity clip. Not because she's pregnant, but because it's hot. Uh, and this will give her some kind of relief from the heat so this way she lays on some towel or something like that I don't know why but I like to use my brush and brush it on the side I, I don't know why it's probably not really good for the brush But seeing as I've been using this brush like this for a hot minute, this brush can withstand some uh, heavy duty damage. Right now we're just trying to comb all this out. dog does mat up, you're going to want to make sure you brush it and comb it because one, especially in the summertime, they get undercoat. All dogs shed, all of them, all of them. Some of them might not be able to drop it down, they just hoard it. So it's like stuck in the coat and you got to brush it out. Alright, let's see what button is. Okay, that's a four. We do not want a four. Try this wonderful seven. This is the wall competition series seven. I really like this seven. <coughs> now, when you're doing your schnauzer cut, you're going to want to stop right here at the elbow, and then right here, there's actually withers back here to where you can. I don't know the weather's have to do with anything, but I mean, you can use that as your guide too. Um, but you're going to grab this little part right here, and from that part down, you're going to highlight this cheekbone, the spiegel muscle. Um, and now the skirt is going to go right down to here. It kind of blends off. It's not supposed to be this high up, and it's not supposed to be this long either. Um, Chanel and are meant to be shorter and tighter. Um, I don't know why. Uh, people like a long coat. It's more like a cocker or a westy. Um, and that's kind of like the hint, the feel that I'm getting when I see um, that groom like this. <coughs> Now the main thing, the reason why I like this seven is because when you cut it, it still looks really, it looks really, really nice, but it doesn't look shaved like a seven would make it. And you just follow this down, grab your little piece here, and follow that down. Now 
Now, if you had a standard, you would take this a little bit more meatier to make it a little bit more meaty. Now, you can actually get this and kind of glide off of it. I always like to make sure that there's a definition for it. Definitely not like that, right? So it's kind of... Cook that up really quick. You see how much nicer and cleaner that looks already? It looks so much nicer. Anybody just kind of intake. Now technically this brie is not supposed to be soft, they're supposed to be wiry, but this is a home dog, they don't get hand bricked or anything like that, so their coat is, it's already soft, so it doesn't really matter. Now usually when you're doing this, you can actually glide off and have this go all the way down. So like when you're doing this and it's close like this, you're actually going down and see how I'm still going down in that straight area, that straight line, even though there's nothing here, don't go in and bend. You just want to go in and keep going down. Uh, because if you go in and bend, you're going to cut this and then it's going to, you're not going to have a good uh, stretch. You're going to mess it all up. Okay? So don't do that. Don't do that. That looks very nice. It looks very nice. It looks very nice. Yes, yes, I like it. It looks very nice. And now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. See the difference between that side? There's that side. How she came in. And then that side. Now this side is not done yet. We're just setting the pattern into the coat. Okay, or as what we're calling it, roughing it in. Or would it consider be roughing it in because I'm doing it after the bath. I don't know. But anyway, you're doing the same thing. Find your shoulder. Or you can also find your little withers on the side of your butt over here. And use that. I have to do this with this hand, otherwise I'll... You see how I'm going down and it's cutting that other hair down for me naturally? So it's kind of naturally already blending the form a little bit. And that's what you want it to look like. You don't want it to look like there was something here and this was never here. You want to kind of make it look like it's blended. And that's why I like using the competition series because it really makes that blending look really nice. Yeah, go all the way down. And I shave on the inside of her leg. Always make sure you're checking your blade. Because the uh, higher the number, the quicker it's going to get hot. Right now we're like a lukewarm. Be careful of the buckle. You don't want to nick or cut it. But then you want to make sure you shave the inside of this leg. And you're going to do the same thing to the other one. Now don't go too far out to where you're going to start cutting the front of this leg. You don't want to do that. I actually like this side a lot better than the other side. All right, now we're going to push over here. And now we're going to do the front of the chest, okay? 
Now, when I do the front of the chest, I find the bone, the breastbone, it's right here. I cut this part right here off, and I just leave a little bit in the front. That's how I do it. Do. Show you that right there. Now this is technically probably for your standard channel there, but I do it for my little ones anyway because they tend to get really matted up front anyway. So this kind of helps keep it down to a minimum. Face him. Now you can do your face with a 10. Um, so this way it's shorter or longer. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my 7, but I'll probably do a 10 on the ear. Tail over here. Gonna brush, back brush the ears. On every schnauzer, there's like a little mole. You see that little, uh, this little line right here? You see that little whisker? There's a little whisker right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's a little whisker right here where my finger is. Now, there's a whisker on each side, and it's usually right below, and a little, yeah, it's literally right below the eyes. So you're just going down the eyes. Everything here gets left. Everything back gets shaved. Make sure that when you're doing this, you're careful of your um, your eyebrows. Because you don't want to shave the eyebrows, because that's what's going to give you your expression on your face. Now, you shave all this down here now, or if you want, you can always get a pair of shears, um, and you can kind of use that to blend in, because I'm probably going to do that too. Everybody grooms their schnauzers differently. Why? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I never had anybody um, do the whole hula thing on a schnauzer until I moved down to the south. Just going down the sides and everything before I go and get that 10. That is going to go in there. Alright, now that that's done, now we're going to do the ears. Oh god. So the ears, I like to shave the insides with a 40 blade. Yeah, I really like that side better. I hate that. I hate that you always have one side that's better as a good one. <sighs> I'm going to shave the inside of this with a 40. Be very careful. Make sure your blade is flat. Your dog is not moving. Um, if your dog is moving, don't attempt this. Because it doesn't take no time to cut a dog ear one of these suckers. And she is going to need her ears plucked out. As you can see, she's got quite a bit of hair in there. Um, schnauzers are definitely one breed that you're definitely going to want to pluck. The ears because they get very bushy very quickly and always be careful when you're doing the ear there's usually a little flap right here for some reason it cuts off I don't know why
Now you can get hemostats, you can get um, ear powder and just put it in there and actually do it out of your, out of your finger and just pluck it. I can't do that because I have carpal tunnel and uh, arthritis in my hand. So I just grab a little bit, <coughs> I turn it slowly and I'm rubbing the ear. Pull it out. See? Right here. Now, if you do that too fast and you pull too fast, you're going to pull skin out of the dog's ear. You're going to cause irritation to the ear. Um, and then that's going to cause an infection. Plus, it's also going to cause them to not like getting their ears pulled. Now some dogs do not like this. Uh, they do not like the ear plucking at all. Some are some are fine with it, some are used to it. So plucking the ears depends on your dog. Uh, you know, if they don't like it and stuff. Oh, sorry. Now that that's all shamed. I'm just going to pluck the little bit that's in the front. Shave it, I mean not pluck it, because we already did pluck it. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, now we're going to shave the ears with a 10. The reason why I'm shaving the ears with a 10 is because the ears tend to grow back pretty damn quick. Now, if you want to use a 10 on the face, you most certainly can. It's really not going to be that much of a difference on the face to the body if you're using a 7. not a show dog. This is a home dog. So I like to make sure that the hair doesn't get in her mouth when she's eating. We're going to put this on her private, but this is also a number 10. Now we're going to give her maternity. So we're going to, oh, 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 Lord Jesus, sorry. All right, so we're going to shave from I don't want to do this with a 10. And right here. Right, 
Now, some people will shave down there if there's um, tight matting. Now, you certainly can do that. If there's matting there, it's a good spot, a good thing to do if they're matted. Uh, this way, you're still on that schnauzer clip. Now, on the body, I think he technically likes the body longer. Um, so what we're going to do is get no for anyone here. You can live right here. drum and everything so I don't know but I did find some nice blade cheap blades on uh, Amazon they're on my storefront I'm gonna order some of them <coughs> and see how they work and basically you just putting a clip comb on here and just for people that just don't want to scissor as much, this is kind of like the lazy route, I guess. I don't mind scissoring, but if I have to scissor less, I'm fine with it. I'm going to do some front leg. Because we want these to look like stove pipes.
Now this chest part, if you want to go down this part, you can. If you want to leave that part, you can. I'm going to go down it just a little bit, just because it is so long. I don't want it matting up. Thing I hate about garlic. save a few dollars. All the tools that I use are on there. make a line right over that. I'm not trying to flip you off and give you the finger. You just have to be that finger. <laughs> so you always want to have your clipper flat when you're doing this. Um, you don't want to be digging all up in there. But when you do it inside, you want to kind of do it as like a scooping. <clears throat> there we 
try to find the top of the pad and then shave down it. Now for beginners, I would say use a 10 or a 15 on your pads. Pads can be very tricky to learn how to do. Um, but once you get used to it, it's, it's okay. It does get a little bit easier. Some dogs do not like their pads shaved, so it might be a struggle. But thankfully, Miss Sadie is a good baby. Thank you, baby. He's a good baby. One more pad. Hey, baby. Oh, thank you for the kisses. I love it. I love it. stuff off, it might not take stuff off. It didn't take much off. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, since she's getting her nails grinding, we're going to grind our first, 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 I'm making words up. We're going to pull all this hair back here. Now if you feel comfortable, you can uh, scissor it first and then do it. Grind. And I'm going to grind these tabs as I go around and do my legs. Sometimes when you do it in little breaks, little pieces at a time, you're a little bit more uh, okay with getting the nails done. Okay, so we've got a comb already. We're going to get our shears. Okay. We've got a straight to curved and a chunker. Now, a chunker is something that I highly recommend on terriers. I love chunkers. I love some chunkers, let me tell you. I didn't learn about chunkers until late in my grooming career. I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see what the freak I'm... Oh, no. Nope. There we go. Okay. So, we lift the foot up, okay? Bring it back forward. Now, you can do this on the ground or you can do this standing up. You're basically just feeling around with your scissors for the top of the nail and you're doing a round foot. Now if you want, you can do this on the ground. You can do this on the ground as well. Just be careful that when you're going around your foot, you're not clipping underneath to where you can cut the pad. When you cut the pad, then you've got a problem. And you need to go to a vet and have it glued or, or uh, stitched. <clears throat> It'll probably have to be glued, to be honest. Most pad issues are, are glue, but if you can avoid it at all costs, I would. Now I'm going to use my chunkers to kind of just blend this in. Okay. Now I'm going to take this back part of the back foot. I'm going to kind of just blend this down.
Okay, so now you got your leg there, okay? And now we're gonna just brush all this up on the side, okay? And then you're just gonna get your, you can do this with chunkers or you can do this with your blunders, your thinning shears, whatever floats your freaking boot. And you're just gonna get that line that's sticking out on your leg. I scissor downwards, I mean you scissor wherever you want. But I like to scissor downwards. sticking out on the side in here. It's got to go, my friend. is because when they shake that's how their hair is going to lay and if you don't like the way that's sticking out then you'll just need to scissor it up and blend it in. Just finishing up this side. I don't need to get some of this Dramamine. just in case throw the other one out. I don't know why I'm feeling really nauseous all of a sudden. And I didn't eat anything for breakfast. All I had uh, was um, a little coffee you seen me drink. Could have been because I took my medicine on an empty tummy. like layering it in a sense if you really think about it. Brush up and brush out. Brush up and brush out. Scissor happy.
doing this, you're not going all the way down to the ankle. You're just taking out that line that goes flat down. You see some of that hair sticking out on the side over there? You may want to wait a couple minutes if you need to use the Oh, you done blew it up? I did. I feel so much better though. You look better. You look, you look thinner. Well, thank you. I'm like a good BM to make you lose some weight. going to do it flat down. Okay. I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee, I'm a bee, 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 I'm a, I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee, 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 bee. I like the scissor underneath the armpits. Straight curves, thin cheers, whatever floats your boat. I'm using my chunkers. do it at a point so this way you're kind of blending the top into it.
I like to shake out the front legs. Sometimes that makes them naturally come out. This way I can get a nice even clip.
them are in that business, they are not happy. Now we're going to work on the ear. Now when you do this part, you need to be very, very careful. Make sure your dog is still. Yes. Thank you for the kisses. I know. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I love you. I know. You're such a sweet girl. You're such a sweet girl. I know. Thank you. My nose was cold and now it's nice and warm. You basically want to scissor all the outside of this fringe here. But you can, you'll can. you need to make sure that you put your index finger and your thumb uh, on the edge of it. So this way when you're scissoring it, you're not going past that. Now generally when you're scissoring, uh, if you do it without it, your scissors will be able to feel um, the ear. I can't really explain it. It's kind of like you have to do it in order to understand what I'm saying. But you don't want to clip, you don't want to scissor down too hard. But usually if you scissor down slowly, um, your scissors will not clip the ear. Now if you do cut your ear, it's not the end of the world. Your dog will just need stitches or uh, glue, uh, depending on where and how bad you, you cut it. So whenever you're doing the ear, make sure your dog is calm. You're not trying to get it all riled up. There's, you know, probably be better if no one's around and it's just you and the dog because sometimes dogs like to get really, really excited when they see somebody else in the room and you're not going to be able to do Fifi's ears if they're like, oh, could you imagine if to do that? No. I don't want you to do that because then Fifi's going to get a boo-boo. And then you're going to feel bad that you cut Fifi's ears. Okay. <coughs> now we're going to do the brows. Okay. Now your beard is going to be the same length. It's supposed to be the same length as your beard. So like if you have a long eyebrow, you're going to have a long beard. She got some schmutzies right there. See that? All that schmutzies. You know what I say about that schmutzies? Hey schmutzies. Bye schmutzies. And that right there is why I like to shave in front of the lips. Because then they get all these little schmutzies. And then either one, you gotta scissor it out or you have to brush it up. So either way, I don't think the brushing feels good. It probably almost feels like a knot. You're brushing on your own head. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here though. I know it looks like I'm going but I'm really not. I'm literally doing this with like a light touch. It's crazy. Schmitzies anywhere else. All the schmutz is out. Okay. Now, eyebrows. Have your dog flat down like this. Okay. Now you're gonna get your straight cur your straight your straight curves your straights. Okay. You're gonna go from the point here down because you want this to look like half of the eyebrow. So just make sure that you don't put your scissor underneath here, okay? Now sometimes your first eyebrow will come out really pretty and it'll look amazing and then your other eyebrow is gonna be like, <laughs> you ain't getting a second eyebrow like that. And that's generally what happens. You're always gonna have one eyebrow that's better. Oh, 
but you want to try and get it at an angle. See, I always get this eyebrow one better. But then if I keep scissoring that one, I'm going to fuck it up. Excuse my French. Okay, so now we got the eyebrows. Now, you can do this with thinning shears. I'm going to do this with thinning shears. Any hair that you have around this eye here, you're going to want to get your thinning shears, lift up that eyebrow, and scissor it. You're going to want to blend this all in nice. To where this just stands off really nice like that blended. Okay. And you're gonna do that to your other eye too. uneven. You can see it all uneven. So what we're going to do is get your straights, okay? Now this is going to go up. Okay. Push all this down and you're going to put it at an angle because you want more of a rectangular face. Same thing on the other side, just be careful of your ear. with my thinning shears and I'm just scissoring up. I'm just taking about that much off the front part. But if I bring it to the front and I sh bring it to the front like this, I'm still, I'm not making it round. But I'm getting it to where it's a little bit more even, I guess. Your beard is supposed to be a point. Her beard was kind of not a point, so. Sure. 
I don't see anything that's sticking out that needs to be trimmed. And that's what you should always do. Take five minutes. If it takes longer, then it takes longer. Uh, but you want at least want to take a minimum of five minutes. Um, to go over your dog. Just to make sure your dog looks good to you, okay? It's not going to hurt you. Might back you up a little bit, but... but <coughs> if you want your client to come back, you'll take the problems. I mean, even if you don't want the problem to come back, still take five minutes. Take a few minutes to go over your dog just to neaten it up to make sure that everything is, you know, okay, okay, up to your standards, because this is your name that's going out on this dog. This is your billboard. So if you send a dog out that looks like crap, I'll tell you what. Basically telling everybody, hey, come see me. You have shitty haircuts. So sometimes it kind of gets into my mouth and in their mouth. Yeah, so. But I cover around their eyes because I don't want to get in their face. Okay. But this is the finished cut. Oh, I got to fix that leg. So yeah, I got to fix right back up, right up here. But that's the clip. I'm going to fix that uh, up. And then uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure if you are not subscribed, you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Uh, this way you know when I upload videos. Um, I just recently opened up a storefront, as I just told y'all in the beginning of the video. So make sure to check that out. Check out my TikTok and my Facebook. I mix and Melissa. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Love y'all. Bye.